Hey guys, Alan from Hack Gadgets here. Today is review day. We're going to be taking a look at one of these ESR meters. We'll uh, take a look and see how it works, and then we'll crack it open and see what makes it tick. Let's uh, head over to the bench. Okay, so here's the uh, box from the ESR meter. Uh, this one I got uh, from eBay. It's uh, it's not a super high-end model, obviously, um, based on the price, which is around $55 US shipped to me in Canada. So compared to a lot of things out of uh, out of China, this is actually in a in quite a nice box. Oftentimes you get something that's it's just in a bag. Okay, so in the box we got a manual. We have some extremely short leads and that's it we have the meter okay so let's get rid of this plastic here nice of them to put some protective plastic on the front okay so first impression of the meter is it's very, very plasticky. Um, this little tilting bale is uh, is a joke, actually. It's gonna, it works, but it's gonna it's gonna break in in no time. As long as the electronics are good, that's not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, the case could have been better. Okay, so let's take a closer look at it here. So we have some basic uh, capacitor uh, and voltage guidelines here for uh, the ESR resistance. Um, looks like we have some pluggable holes here uh, down at the bottom here where uh, you can just uh, pop in some leads and of course we have two positions here for the uh, for the test leads to go into the alligator clips and it looks like we have three buttons and my phone is ringing okay so this is a uh, well you can see this is actually quite a thin piece of plastic here unlike here's a fluke unlike you know the lens on a fluke so it's not a uh, a rugged meter that you're gonna be throwing around like a like a uh, workhorse fluke that you know uh, bangs around in your toolbox and you can trust it but uh, We'll see, and we have a USB jack if it'll focus in the side here. So we'll read the manual and see that might be for charging. Um, I guess maybe if you have some rechargeable batteries or just might be for external power uh, for running this thing without batteries. Okay, so we have a battery compartment. Let's crack it open and take a look what we got. Okay, so we can see we got some Schmutz on the screw there, so that's uh, and it's a self tapper, so there's no no threaded inserts. Didn't expect it. Would have been nice though. Yeah, so no threaded inserts. And there we go, two AA batteries, which I have a couple right here. Let's pop a couple in. I'm not going to bother about the the back of it. Okay, let's give it a quick test. I'm going to press power. Okay, there's our welcome screen. We jump into automatic mode and we can see here we have a battery indication. It shows we're in automatic mode 10 to 100 R, so the R should mean ohms. And the bottom gives us a little indication here. Um, so basically it's saying here uh, the reading for a 25 volt E cap reading is overflow. So that means very bad. But of course, you know, we, uh, we don't have anything connected here. Let's give the reset a try. I'll clip the leads together. So they were showing a very low ohms reading. I'm going to press reset, or zero, sorry. Okay, we have zeroed our meter. I'm going to disconnect. And let's try some capacitors. Well, let's try mode ranges first here. I'm going to press it. There we go. So we're in manual. 0 to 1, press it again, 1 to 10, press it again, 10 to 100. And 
then I want to go back to auto. There we go, back to auto. It ranges pretty quick. Got a wide variety of capacitors, some really golden oldies here. Uh, just from the, the schmutz on the side, you can tell these have been used and desoldered. And a bunch of these have been used on, you know, probably some breadboard uh, circuits, but these are all brand new. Out of the pack, these are all brand new. So let's try a small one first here, shall we? Okay, so this is a Elna. And this is a, let me spin it around here, 10 microfarad, 25 volt. So first I'm going to try plugging us in. So I'm assuming we have these jacks over here are connected to this guy. And these over here are connected to this guy. So I'm just going to straddle that and jam it in. Okay, so it auto-ranged. And I've got 0.16. And it tells us right here, so I'm not, I'm not even going to look at the, the little chart at the bottom here. It tells me that this is a, a good reading for this capacitor. Let me try a golden oldie here. Okay, so this tells me this is 0 0.046 ohms, and it's also telling me it's a good capacitor. Now, of course, I could use the chart and double check. And, okay, so this one we just checked that was uh, also an Elna. 42 volt, 6800 microfarad. The one we're checking right now is a, a Nichicon, 100 microfarad, 50 volts. And that's connected, and we have 0.168 ohms. And, okay, so our display changed. Good if capacitance is less than 470 microfarad, which it is. It's 800. Oh, so, so it gives us some interesting indications there. Okay, so I'm just going to let this stabilize for a second. 0.172 and I'm just going to flip this around so it shouldn't matter because this ESR meter and it's very close 0.164 it shouldn't matter because this is basically putting out an AC either square wave or sine wave into this and it'll be extremely low voltage um, low enough that it won't turn on a transistor junction so I'm thinking you know maybe something in the order of 0.1 volts or so 0.1, 0.2, something around there. Okay, so that's how it reads capacitors. Um, let me check. I don't think I took a look at this one. I don't think that any of my capacitors would be uh, defective. So that's the only issue. I don't have any any newish ones that, uh, yeah, this one's also showing good, that, uh, you know, five or six-year-old capacitors that had um, all of those ESR issues, you know, the, the power supply issues and stuff. Okay, so let's uh, let's hook this up to a scope and let's see what this thing actually outputs when it's doing its test. Okay, so we got the meter on, it's hooked up to the scope, and basically the output of the meter is going directly into channel one of our scope here. And if we zoom in, we can see some math is going on here. Um, so we're just taking some measurements here of channel one. And let me just, uh, it's a little bit jerky. Let me just uh, pause this here. And we can take a nice look here. So the max we're getting is about, well, exactly what we're thinking, 148 millivolts, which is about uh, 0.15 volts. Um, and our frequency, 99.6 kilohertz so on the meter itself it says 100 kilohertz so it's exactly right and we do have a nice sine wave so it isn't a stepped wave and let's keep our eye on this guy here I'm just gonna put it back into run mode and I'm gonna put a capacitor in here let's see what happens Okay, so that's our signal 
when it's actually reading a capacitor. Okay, and here's a better shot of the actual measurement. So we can see it's doing its measurement in two bursts here. And I'll remove the cap and we go directly back to the sine wave. And for those interested in the manual, here we are. So it uh, looks like it does have some English and some Chinese. So this is the MESR 100 V2 user guide. Okay, so hopefully you should be able to read this if you uh, pause the video. So it's just basically saying that uh, it has a measurement range of 0.001 to 100 ohms in circuit testing, which is a good thing. You don't have to actually desolder your capacitors, which is, well, which is why you buy an ESR meter. A bit of information about the screen, 100 kilohertz, and... This one here is sine wave. So I guess the previous version was a square wave. They've changed it to sine wave, which we did see. And it looks like also they changed it to nine or from a nine volt battery to double A's. And it has the USB power. Okay, so they give us a little diagram of what we saw there. Actually that looks like it's well it's a stepped sine wave there. The actual sine wave looks better than this diagram and there's a resolution it's one percent and two percent <clears throat> and as you suspected and the indicates <coughs> the indicate negative here and positive here um, well we know that's not really the case but uh, I guess uh, black and red is what they're what they're showing us Okay, and here's some more information, how to power it on, press and hold it for two to three seconds. And let's see what it shows when we power it off here. Thanks for using, goodbye. <coughs> okay, auto ranging, we did all that stuff. Backlights, it will be on. Too bad the backlight uh, didn't have an option to be shut off. Wow, this is interesting. Auto sleep. Around 10 hours of not using, it'll shut down. Now, I did have it on for a bit there, so I know it's not 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes would be a much better time. Jeez, unless you're having it plugged into USB, I wouldn't want this thing on for 10 hours. Another picture of the table. A little description of the stand. And then, bang, right into Chinese. Okay, let's crack this thing open. I've removed the four screws from the back. They're here. I've also taken out the battery compartment here. I uh, don't think that it would re be required to be taken out to take this apart, but I did anyway. Uh, the only thing I can say that, you know, might have been something they could have done is they could have used five of all the same screws, but now uh, the battery compartment one is a little bit different. They are self-tappers like we expected. Okay, let's see what happens here. This comes apart. Okay, so there are wires that are coming over to the front and are connected. So those are soldered in place. There's a bit, a bit of goop on here to uh, keep things, a little bit of thread lock to keep things in place. And so these are screwed in place and then basically these leads are soldered on. And it looks like it's soldered onto the back board. Here's the push buttons. So these are your typical, uh, same thing you would see in a uh, typical remote control. This is like a carbonized pad that gets pushed when you press this down. And then this is just your, your typical gold fingers that are uh, almost touching. And when the carbonized pad presses on them, it just shorts them out. So nice and reliable and uh, looks great. So I'm assuming this red and blue wire is probably the power for the backlight. So I guess you could probably, if that is what it is, you, you could probably introduce a switch here if you're concerned about the backlight draining your batteries. A little bit of masking tape holding something down there. I guess maybe the bottom of the ribbon uh, connector. Um, and it looks like four screws is what we need to remove to open this thing up. 
Okay, four screws are out, and wouldn't you believe it, this is actually the same size that they used for the battery compartment, so mm, all sorts of uh, inconsistencies here. Anyway, I'll keep those over here so we can remember. So once that's out, this is removable. So it looks like this was actually maybe the, the shell was an afterthought. It looks like there would have been a connector uh, built right onto the circuit board here. And this looks like it would have been a direct couple right into there. So this little jack, this little extender is just to get the jack to raise up high enough to uh, poke out the front. And they've soldered these leads to the back of this board uh, so they don't have to use these guys. Okay, let me just put this back in. And let's take a look at the reverse of this board here. Okay, so first impression is the uh, the circuit board is very nice. The quality of the board uh, assembly is good. They're using a PIC microcontroller there. TI part and a bodge. So obviously this capacitor was intended to be um, low profile enough to uh, sit in there nicely but I guess the ones they ordered or or maybe the case design uh, forced them to uh, sort of solder it in sideways and smoosh it on the board there. And yeah we can see where our connections coming over here which just basically get connected over I'm assuming these two are get, getting connected over to these guys let me test that with the meter and just double check okay so I got some leads going over to a fluke off camera and that's exactly what it is so this gets connected over to here and yeah this one gets connected over to there So overall, I think the circuit board is uh, is really well made. The display is great. Uh, the only downside of this whole design, I think, is the is the case. If this case was uh, a bit better quality, not as plasticky, um, this thing would be awesome. But as far as a meter goes, um, I don't have anything to confirm its accuracy. But assuming that it's accurate, and it seems to be, um, I give this thing a thumbs up. For more information on this and some high-res pictures, make sure to check out hackedgadgets.com.